Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto and bring them out in bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests, we have to ask the question, is 10% of the Cardano wallets out there controlling 94% of all the ADA. So we're gonna take a look at uh, what that means. We're gonna take a look at the, the whales that are potentially uh, controlling all this action. We're gonna take a look at how many ADA wallets are, are actually out there. We're gonna take a look at some Bitcoin data and so as far as like ADA, ADA staking going on. Also we're take a look at other crypto projects and how they stack up. And finally, we're gonna have a friend of the show, uh, Dan from CryptoVisor come on and just give his insight. So before we get into all those things, first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is Thursday, it is the 16th of December, still kind of on that slide of just boringness of what it is. Total market cap, 2.22 trillion, down uh, uh, almost a percent. Nothing big, nothing great. And uh, we've seen some other different players, but uh, the daily sentiment, sentiment is neutral, using trade the chain for sentiment analysis. And we take a look at the coins, there aren't too many up. There really aren't. Uh, you've got, I mean, Bitcoin's down 2% in the last hour, 24 hours. Binance coin, everything's down, except for Solana. Solana is up 2.5%. I know uh, Mel Melania Trump and also uh, jo Michael Jordan, they're going to do NFTs on the Solana blockchain. So that probably pushed them up a little bit. Also, uh, you see a little bit of a bump with uh, Avalanche as they announced that they're going to allow USDC, the stablecoin, to be uh, on their blockchain, which would drastically reduce fees. So that's why one of the two pumps, Terra Luna, I think there's another announcement. I can't uh, say specifically what it is, but that's, that's pretty much what we have here as far as the market. Nothing really big going on. So let's just jump into today's top story, which really just talks about, hey, uh, there's a bunch of whales out there and are they controlling everything as far as Cardano? So this is the article I am talking about. And I came across it uh, on Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter, there's a link in the description. That's where all the, all the, the most up-to-date news happens. So this is what we have. 10% of Cardano wealthiest control 94% of the entire supply. So this is the data. So data presented by Finbold, which is a article reading from uh, this uh, website, shows that as of December 13th, 2021, the top 10% of Cardano whales hold over 31 billion ADA out of 33 billion circulating coins, according to data extracted from the on-chain analysis uh, platform Coinmetrics. If you want to take a look at it, this is Coinmetrics. This is where they actually pulled all the data from. And then uh, if you really just uh, step back and just ask yourself, well, what is going on here? And as far as like, because there's a lot of things we have to look at as far as the number, the percentages, and everything else in between. So if we just jump back, it states here, notably the number of ADA within the top 10% of addresses has grown steadily since the year began. Starting at 30 billion in January, the number of ADA held by these addresses have gone up by over a billion, representing an increase of 3%. So, I mean, really, you think about it, it's not uh, too bad, but it is it is concerning when you hear these numbers, 10%. Wow, 10% is controlling 94%. So the right, next question you really have to ask yourself is, well, how many wallets are there? Because if Cardano had 100 wallets and 10%, let me do some quick math, that's 10 so 10 wallets would control 94%. That's not good. That's not really decentralized, right? But if we take a look at how many wallets does uh, Cardano actually have? And this was actually uh, a tweet that was put out on uh, November 1st. And it said, hey, guess what? We just uh, we had just celebrated hitting 1 million mark, and now we hit a whopping 2 million ADA wallets. That's pretty good. So if we're looking at it, 10% uh, of a 1 million, I think is 100,000, double that. Uh, you're looking at 200,000 wallets could potentially, if it is even true, 200,000 wallets, 200, let me say that one more time, 200,000 wallets control 94% of ADA, if that is exactly what it is. So it's an interesting thing. Then to move on, the data from Coinmetrics shows that these top addresses are accumulating more ADA, because here's what you really have to think about when you hear these stories. At first, you, look, you think to yourself, well, that's pretty awful. Then you have to kind of dig deep and go, well, how many wallets are there? Okay, there's that many wallets. Then you have to th really think about what's the what's the problem with a centralization of all these wallets holding all these ADA? The big problem is, is dumping. And that's what you don't want to see. However, if you take a look behind the story and take a look at some on-chain metrics, you can see if they are dumping, if they are accumulating, if they are holding. And that, I think, is the bigger picture of what we're trying to figure out. And then to finish this up, it says Grayscale Investments, 
Grayscale, the uh, one that have that, uh, that nice Bitcoin fund and cryptocurrency funds and one of the first in, the, in there to do it. Uh, they titled An Introduction to Cardano. This was a report they put out not too long ago. It says that Cardano is undervalued compared to the second largest crypto, Ethereum. The report came after ADA had reached an all-time high of $3 in September. So even though they're they're like, hey, it's three bucks at that point. Now it's not three dollars, like buck 20, buck 30. They're like, it's undervalued. So that's why they picked it up. And a lot of their plays that they pick up are pretty good. I mean, they have, they have Bitcoin, they have Ethereum, they have Solana, uh, they have uh, the different metaverse plays, the central land and things like that, or mana. So these guys are not, and they're, they're slouches. And they're the ones that actually really get in front of Bitcoin and they figure that out. And I think they're figuring out the other stuff. So I can get on board with that. And then also it states the number one cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has top whales controlling even a higher percentage of its circulating supply. Finbold reported earlier that this year that 99% of the Bitcoin circulating supply was held by just 10% of Bitcoin wallets. That's a lot. So first you have to again break this down, this information, is this true? You have to think to yourself, what's the circulating supply of Bitcoin? Well, it's around 18 and a half million, somewhere around there, okay? So then you gotta think to yourself, well, 10% of Bitcoin wallets, you can do some math, you could, I mean, you could do that math, or what you could do is just take a look at uh, some data that's already uh, pre-packaged for us. And when I, when I say that, I say there's a website, I'll link in the chart, it's called BitInfo Charts. And we can take a look here, and Bitcoin is on the top here, and you can take a look at all different bunch of things. Eight is not on there, unfortunately. But if we scroll down, uh, we take a look at uh, wealth distribution. Now, of course, this is not percentages, of course. Yeah, that's right. It says wealth distribution, top 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. And you can see how it corresponds to the percentages. You've got the top 10 for wealth dis distribution. You got 5.68%. And some of those could be exchanges. You have to remember that because exchanges hold a lot of Bitcoin. Then the top 100, 14%. Top 1,000, 34%. And the top 10,000, is the lion's share at 58%. So then I was like, well, let me take a look at that actual article. So when I click on it, unfortunately it comes up, arrow 404, it doesn't exist. So I'm not for sure how accurate these things are, but this is the information that we've been given. Then also, just like I talked about before about, well, who is actually, are they, are they holding? Are they dumping? Are they selling? Just remember, if you want to take a look at the staked value, there's a great website called stakingrewards.com. We can take a look here. Then the top three, and Cardano used to be one. I will give it that. Solana used to be down like four or five. Now Solana is number one at as far as uh, the amount uh, that is actually totally staked is 77% for Solana. Ethereum is at 7%. That's your Ethereum 2.0. And Cardano is at a whopping 70%. So remember, what are people doing with this Cardano? What are they doing? Well, right now they're staking a whole ton of it. Why? Because they believe in the project and they think things are gonna go pretty well and we'll see how that works out. Now, this is the last thing I wanna talk about before we get down in here. And that is if we take a look at some of the other projects, this is uh, on-chain data from Into the Block and I uh, got a free trial, not too bad. And uh, the first thing we're gonna take a look at is Cardano. And you're gonna see here, it says, there's two things it says. It's got, uh, low activity addresses and high activity addresses. And we can break those down. So if we just mouse over, because what I wanna make sure of is, are these exchanges or these actual people? So if you're gonna look at that, you probably wanna take a look at high activity addresses are probably exchanges, right? So if I mouse over that, it doesn't disappear. If I take low activity addresses and, and take those away, then I'm just left with a high activity. So even the number of whales, three, it's 6%. That's probably exchanges, okay? Now we come down here as far as concentration. We can take a look at retail volume. That's us. And then we can take a look at uh, uh, ADA as far as like the green sliver, which is the whales. Then investors volume, another subsection, got 22%. Okay. And then to compare that, let's take a look at how Bitcoin lines up, right? Again, right, is this an exchange? Because there's the number of whales is one. Some, one whale owns 1.4%. It could be. High activity, low activity, maybe. Then we take a look down here. Retail volume, 89%. It's a lot. Whales, maybe that's the Satoshi uh, wallet. Uh, it's 1.4%, uh, and the blue is investor's volume. Now let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum's still pretty good. High activity address, if we uh, take that away, uh, we've got, well, there's seven whales with 21%. Uh, we're looking not too bad. If we take a look at the low activity addresses, which would be like the whales. It's only like one, 
one percent two percent something like that so not not too bad now this is where it gets interesting let's take a look at shiba inu so again if we take away or just look at the high activity addresses you've got a lot uh you got a lot 41 percent four and three and two uh, you're looking at almost 50 percent there and if we just take a look at the low activity addresses this is the one that we think are not moving it probably the whale is just sitting on it you still got a lot uh, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, fifty, uh, about thirteen percent or so, and then this is the big daddy, Dogecoin. So Dogecoin, <laughs> if we take a, if we just take a look at the low activity addresses, which are the are the whales just sitting on it, you got a big lion share. You got 23, 24, 26, 30, roughly thirty percent of all the circulating supply of Dogecoin is in the hands of just a very few number of whales, and that's how we. Kind of take a look at things. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And now let's finish up and let's bring on uh, Dan from Crypto Capital Venture and get a little insights. Okay, and then as promised, just wanted to bring on another uh, point of view. We've got Dan from Crypto Capital Venture. If you haven't seen Dan on his on his uh, YouTube channel, he's got a whopping 300,000 plus subs and uh, he's uh, got his pulse on what is going on with Cardano. Dan, welcome to the show. What is up? Rob, how's it going? Nice to be here with you. I appreciate it. Dan and Dan, I like to play on words that's happening right now. I'm really like Dan on Dan crime. This is what's going on. Yes. So look, we just talked about that article and it looks pretty damning. And if you, if you take a look at it and go, okay, what is going on as far as like the distribution? And when somebody sees that from the outside, they start to worry about the big thing that I would worry about new to this is, well, if there's such a concentration, the thing I worry about is dumping because of those percentages. So give us a little bit of insights as to what we should be looking at and then just take a, take us down the path of the big picture. Yeah, and, and I, I was just, as we were kind of brainstorming this a little bit, I was just mentioning to you, like, you can really, you can take that data, you can take that article headline and you can really take it into different directions. And a lot of times, even on Twitter, YouTube, there's a lot of this type of talk with Bitcoin, right? Like, is it really decentralized with all these whales starting to just, I mean, they're growing and like, is it really decentralized? The question, Michael Saylor just killing it, scooping up tons of Bitcoin, making Bitcoin decentralized, right? And I think we could spend a ton of time talking about that and having that debate. Or, and I was just saying this to you a few minutes ago, we can look at it as well it's so early stage right this is such an early space there's going to be big time whales coming in in all of these protocols and scooping it up because mm -hmm. they see the long-term macro picture they see what's going on in the financial systems they see the problem they see the the solution found in crypto they're scooping it up right so at the very surface level i'm kind of just like well I want as much of that pie as I could possibly get, whether whatever, putting aside what, what the data says, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's still an opportunity for me to accumulate every day. And so how much of that pie am I going to get my hands on putting aside the data, putting aside the FUD, the uncertainty, right? Because at the end yeah. of the day, I think for, if you're not a whale trying to control 10% of a, a blockchain, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, like the opportunity is insanely big for you and I. Yeah, um, and all over. And then right now for context, uh, we're taking a look. It is uh, December 14th, December 15th. What is it? Uh, yeah, December 15th. And we just haven't seen the last two weeks a pretty big uh, retracement. So right now, people who are like, well, I know what's going on. I got Christmas around the corner. I got to buy my kids some toys. I want to lock in some profits or I want to do a little... Uh, wash trading and uh, trade off some some losers and uh, take some losses for for tax reasons or tax loss harvesting they're probably doing that right now just like like the big players but i think as they sell off and the prices get so low there's a chance for some people on the sidelines with big money just to scoop it up like you're talking about so makes sense any insights you got for this one though on chain so, data stuff like that yeah so if we pull up the screen uh i think this is probably with all of the talk talk of what's going on with on-chain data. I think this this data is really paints the perfect visualization, right? So. Okay, what are we looking at here? So right here, hodlers one plus year, right? So an address with a holding period of more than one year. 
this is a nice picture of the increase in Cardano holders. Just a very simple visualization of the growth of one plus mm -hmm. year holders. I like this one even better though. I think this is a really solid picture of, and it, they, they call them cruisers, right? So an address with a holding period between one month and one year. Look at the increase on this chart in the last year. Mm -hmm. And and I'm gonna just pivot real quick because I, I we've been tracking, I track the charts a lot. We've been mm -hmm. tracking the growth through these uh, hard forks, the, the, the staking mechanism back here, 2020, multi-asset ledger right here for Cardano. We have smart contracts right here. We've been tracking that that just protocol growth, the, the fundamental technical achievements of Cardano. And look at this, along that storyline, people are catching catching wind of the opportunity, I think, of this early stage uh, blockchain. And this is kind of the, the coolest piece of data, I think, on the charts, which is the growth of these shorter term uh, investors, one to two, 12 months. And lastly, before, before we kind of pivot, this, yeah. I think, is a really good example of the last couple months, the 60% dip Cardano has seen. Yeah. Look at it. What, less than a month. This is a trader. This is a person that buys into fear very quickly. Unfortunately, it could potentially be the people that are buying the top, right? And then they're like, shoot, we're seeing a 20% <laughs> dip. They're starting yeah. to sell here. And then it's 30, 40, 50%. They're still starting to, they're just, the long-term investors are accumulating, they're buying. And it's just, it's illustrated on the charts, on this data. Yeah. And I got to tell you, like I got into crypto in 2017. I got into Cardano at the very, like towards the tail end of, of that bull market. And then, you know, we saw some pretty big declines, but to me, when I went off, I was just too damn stubborn to sell. And I should have sold a little bit going down. Now I've learned my lesson, dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out if you can. But throughout the time when it was boring and nothing's really going on, that's when I really made the most, that's where all my money was made, honestly. When I was buying up Cardano with seven cents and eight cents and 12 cents and 15 cents and, you know, six cents mm -hmm. and then on, on down the road. So like, I know people are like, hey, why hasn't this gone to five bucks yet? It is a long-term play. It really is. So then, uh, but there is a question that I keep getting a lot of like, well, Rob, Cardano sounds great, but why don't you give me a working product? So Dan, what do you tell the people on uh, your Twitter and YouTube when they start talking about working products? So first off, the, I mean, the best answer is literally the consensus model that Cardano mm -hmm. has. It, the Ouroboros is, it's the best in crypto. I really is. I think this, the, the ease of the staking mechanism that Cardano is offering all Cardano holders. It takes like three seconds to stake. It's not locked in. It's just a beautiful process. It doesn't get talked about enough. So like that alone, what that's offering to the community, to Cardano holders is, in, is incredible. Um, and then you can start digging into, okay, well, Dan, talk about smart contracts. They launched and nothing's happening, right? But from that perspective, because I've run a recruiting firm for startups, I talk about it often mm -hmm. just because there's, there's a similarity. Like when I'm watching the the early stage startup that i'm recruiting for that has like a team of five right right and they're building there's like one dev two devs in the background they're building and then they're just slowly growing and then the product comes to fruition and then their their valuation just goes crazy right and then all of a sudden boom they're acquired right that is kind of the opportunity that we as investors in something like cardano have we're early stage and that's why I think it's such a perfect opportunity for macro term type of thinkers that aren't looking for quick gains because Cardano is a top 10, but it's valuation comparable to Bitcoin or Ethereum. There's such a big spread, like in terms of market cap. And so there's a lot of upside in terms of uh, what's getting ready to happen. And all that said, underline that with the fact that Plutus application backend once developers are able to interact with smart contracts, it's going to be just an explosion. And this is, I have on my screen if you want to share it. It's just a really quick glimpse uh, of, of things getting ready to deploy. Some are active already on Cardano blockchain. And, and this is ah, just, yeah. the, just the beginning. So, What website is that? This is cardanocube.io. It's really, oh, it's a, cool. yeah, it's an awesome website. 
Yeah, I think it's like this. It's like it's like you hear about those those actors or those athletes. They say, "Yeah, this is a, I'm an overnight success that took a decade." It's just kind of one of those things. I know some people yeah. will talk about like, you know, damn it, I just wish it would just just hit uh, and just go, you know, as, as soon as it can. But it's just sometimes, most of the time, it doesn't really work like that. And that's why you'll see like, uh, you know, people win the lottery. Well, they're usually broke in a year because they really didn't uh, do the due diligence and the, and the hard work to get there uh, as time goes on. So yeah. makes a lot of sense. All right. So we, we answer that, answer that. Anything else that we forgot about? Or are we good for there? I think we're I think we're good for there. I mean, it's just it's a game of patience and building. And, and you want to change it. the world with the technology. It's gonna take it's gonna take a little bit of time. If you want to do it right, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Look at look at Cardano's staking me mechanism and no hate against Ethereum, but like what's up with that right now? Do you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> and it's because they took their time to to launch what they <laughs> launched. It's reliable. Yeah. And then, uh, and of course on this channel, this is all investment opinion, not investment advice. Uh, me and Dan are just kind of making our way through the, uh, investment mountain that it is. But, um, you know, if you just kind of look at, uh, where things are going, there's some, there's, there's a theory as far as like getting the fastest horse and just kind of ride that out. Or there's uh, other people like us just say, you know what, just find out something you like, as far as like the team, find out the community, see how strong that is. And then just kind of go on the things that you actually understand and like, and just go from there. All right. So, so Dan, uh, before I forget, let's take a look. You can check out uh, Dan, his channel over at uh, Crypto Capital Venture. The link is in the description. And that is it for this one. Dan, I want to say thanks for coming on. It's been a long time coming. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. Let's, let's do it more often. Have to have you on the show as well. It's, Sounds it's, good. It was fun. All right. Let's jump back. Okay, so I hope that helps. And I want to say uh, thanks, Dan, for coming on the show. Uh, you can find the link to his YouTube channel in the description. And just as a reminder, also, we did a, a DCA Live. It was uh, me and James from Invest Answers and Ben from Into the Cryptoverse. We talked a lot of a plethora of different subjects, uh, talking about where the project is or where the, where the crypto is going, uh, some different uh, tax reasons for maybe this uh, sell off. I also talked about uh, Senator Warren talking about how stable coins are the ultimate evil and just where things are going in general. So yeah, you will find that in the description as well. But that is it for today. So look, if you like today's video, first I want to say thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. That's it for today. So thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.